Welcome to It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Adam Balkin. Now that's a title we chose just to help make math and the sciences seem a little less daunting. Today we are in Orlando, Florida in the shadow of Cape Canaveral and actually we are talking about rocket science and the long-term future of space exploration. What will space travel be like 100 years from now? Where will we go? How will we get there? And what should we do when we get there? To try and answer some of these difficult questions, NASA and DARPA have been running for about a year now the 100-year Starship Study, a public call to everyone from university professors to hobby physicists to science fiction writers to offer up their ideas. And many of those ideas were presented at the recent 100-year Starship Symposium in Orlando, Florida. How do we move technologies and the science and the motivation so that 100 years or more from now, we can start looking at launching missions to another star? And among the key issues being looked at, will humans be traveling to the stars or living on them? We work to try to take our space observations uh, and see what the basis of life is. Could life exist anywhere else. Now even after just about five minutes here, it's easy to see most of these people are way out of the box thinkers, literally way out of the universe thinkers with ideas like perhaps sending someone like you or me to explore space only not necessarily as ourselves. Professor George Hart is an evolutionary paleontologist at Louisiana State University who calls what he believes one of the next steps in human evolution will be Homo robotica. A mechanical body and a real brain I think this is probably 20 years away at most. This is the creature that's going to explore our solar system. And to those who ask why we should continue spending money exploring outer space, well, for starters, call it mankind's insurance plan. Most of the species have gone extinct on the Earth. I think it's something like 99% or more due to asteroid impacts. If mankind got wiped out and we're not somewhere else, then everything that everyone has created, dreamed, or done, what has it been for? But reaching for the stars doesn't literally have to mean reaching for the stars. There are plenty of people with really far out ideas much closer to the Earth. Well, that's right, Adam. Anyone who says science is boring certainly hasn't been to Maker Fair. Although it's only been around for a couple of years, this event is certainly gaining momentum. At a recent Maker Fair, the New York Hall of Science, more than 30,000 people turned out, parents and kids alike, for this hands-on experience. Organizers describe it as a low-tech, high-tech county fair. <laughs> If this is the county fair of the future, then the future is now. Rockets and robots have replaced pigs and pies, but the idea remains the same. Create a gathering for people who otherwise work on their own, building, creating, and just plain making stuff. Bring them out of their workshops into a public venue where people have a chance to interact with them, experience their creations, talk to them about what they did and what motivated them, and simply have fun. That's right, public. Here's your chance to meet the makers, tinkerers and thinkers, and see what makes them tick. What they're making may be new, but Margaret Honey of the New York Hall of Science says the instinct may be as old as primordial ooze. People love to make things. They love to create things. It's sort of in our, you know, DNA. Just as this event reinvents old agricultural fairs, much of what's on display is reimagined as well. This life-sized recreation of the board game Mousetrap demonstrates not only the complex engineering required to build a Rube Goldberg machine, but also the all-important scientific process called trial and error. Other exhibits illustrate how existing technology can be repurposed to create something entirely new. It uses a Microsoft Kinect to, to sense motion and in three dimensions. Given all the gadgets and gizmos, it's no wonder the growing annual gathering attracts fans of all ages. It's just like stuff that I can do that are hands on and it's a lot of fun just to make stuff. There's no better way to learn about science and technology and there's no better way to get people thinking about what's possible down the road than to have them you know mess around with creating things themselves it's very very motivating it's motivating for all of us motivating enough to transform the curiosity seekers of today into the scientists of tomorrow 
judging from the enthusiasm in the young maker's tent, the data's looking pretty good. Yeah, probably gonna be a, maybe a scientist. I think science, and I sort of like pro programming. I never tried to, it sounds fun. You should really try to pursue something in math or science because it will really help you in the future. Just because if you know a lot, then it's better to know a lot than not know anything at all. And as excitement around Maker Faire continues to grow, look for it, or a mini version of it at least, to roll into a community near you. For It Ain't Rocket Science, Tara Lynn Wagner, back to you. Or if you're more into cars, if that's your idea of tinkering, then perhaps you're a little bit like these kids we're about to introduce you to, whose creativity was fueled by NASCAR. <laughs> Ninth grader Sylvester Brooks wants to design his own car someday. Now he and his classmates get to see how fast they can take one apart. Push it back in, push it back in. I'm expecting to learn more about cars and the way they work and the way the engine and the motor systems are put together. The pit crew challenge is just one of the ways hundreds of high schoolers are learning about career opportunities in the motorsports industry. And they're hearing firsthand from NASCAR driver Casey Kane, it's not all about racing. There's a kid asking, well, I thought you could only drive a NASCAR, you know, and, and then, you know, that's what it may look like. But, I mean, there are so many things that go into making the team succeed and making the teams make it to the racetrack. Bank of America organized Motorsports Career Day at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. The event showcases the $6 billion industry's vast disciplines like engineering, marketing, safety, and competition. They will experience some race conditions. They'll relate certain kinds of mathematical calculations to outcomes in a race. So it's really about experiencing the professionals in the sport and experiencing the work of the sport and connecting it to math and science and technology. Kathy Bassant calls it a teachable moment that you can't easily learn in a classroom. The STEM curriculum is hugely important because passion for what you might want to do or what your dreams are starts young. And by incorporating subjects they're studying at school, she hopes this experience could help lead students to a future career path. This is the first time Charlotte has hosted a motorsports career day of this magnitude and with NASCAR right in our backyard, students realized how cool learning math and science can be. For at 8 Rocket Science, I'm Heather Wallaga. And to find programs like these in your neighborhood, you can check Time Warner Cable's site, connectamillionminds.com. We do have to stop here for a quick break. Coming up, though, a behind-the-scenes look at innovations happening to the very device you're watching this on. Some ideas you'll have to see to believe. And if you weren't a fan of math before, we'll show you a place that might just change all that. Plus, a look at some unusual sources of energy. And the creator of movies like Avatar and Titanic is here himself to tell you just why engineering is so important. It's all just ahead. <laughs> 